Now, scientists have been trying to determine how the coronavirus pandemic will end. Our health expert has been looking at the many theories during the rounds. A virus is a genetic information that needs to be within a cell to keep on existing. So to survive, the virus needs to keep on finding viable hosts to infect, and it needs to keep on spreading within a population. A pandemic only stops once the virus falls short from finding new viable hosts. And that's why when we're trying to put an end to a pandemic, we're trying to reduce what scientists call the basic reproduction number, or on average, how many people will get contaminated by an infected person. And if you're under the threshold of one, then the virus is not spreading actively within a population anymore. There are, of course, many ways to reduce this, this R0. Uh, first of all, you could be dealing with a virus that's not very contagious in itself. That's what happened with MERS or it can be a virus that has mutated and has become less contagious, or it can be sensitive to temperatures and stop, for instance, with summer. You can also reach herd immunity, so you're waiting for 60% of a population to get infected and to now be immune to the virus. Now, some countries have also put an end to certain pandemics with very restrictive sanitary measures and quarantine. That's what happened with SARS, for instance. When it comes to COVID-19, a lot of countries have opted for a strict lockdown, and that has enabled to reduce the r naught from 3.3 people to 0.5 people, but that's only temporarily because once you ease the lockdown, that number is going to go back up. And that's why epidemiologists have been saying that you need to identify, test, and treat those who present symptoms of COVID-19, but let others go on with their lives. The last solution, of course, is a vaccine, and that's what happened with the N1H1 pandemic. That's how uh, we put an end to that pandemic. Now, muted commemoration.